Welcome to the Ride of My Life podcast. I'm Caroline Rena, and I will be sharing with you the logistics of what I'm doing to move into a van for a while and working through the emotions and challenges that go along with it. As I develop my knowledge and awareness, I hope to connect with you as I go on this journey. Hey everyone, I'm Caroline Rena, and this is episode six of The Ride of My Life. Uh, this one's going to be a little tough for me because there's a lot of emotional things that have been going on over the past few days, but to be expected in some cases and not in others. And I just wanted to share uh, what's been going on. So uh, closer and closer, I'm clearing things out between packing and organizing what I have left. Uh, This was all on the um, 28th, which was a couple of days ago. And that was Saturday, yeah. And uh, just getting ready for my ride and feeling excited and scared at the same time and continuing to be on hold with the car set up for now, but also gathering information on the best and most practical way for me to do this um, as to how I want to be out on the road. So um, I haven't stopped that, um, but the actual action pieces are kind of on hold, me partially because of the holiday and partially because I'm, and this is what's happening with this uh, Uh, the last couple of days, partially because I'm actually working through emotions again. So, um, and yeah, it is possible to go through more than one emotion at the same time, um, such as the excitement and the fear. (laughs) So uh, if you didn't have fear, then it wouldn't be exciting, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's like the, it's the excitement of what's next, the fear of what's next and living in the moment at the same time. So it's quite the mental, emotional workout. Um, happening with me at this point. So it's really hard to explain what's going on inside of me, obviously, because in a way, I don't even know what's happening. I'm just trying to kind of walk my way through it and feel my way through it. And it's, it's like a complete turn my life upside down. And it's something that's necessary. I know it is. I feel it in my gut so I can follow my guidance and do what I'm here to do, which is what I believe I'm doing right now. Um, And I'm running the gamut of these feelings daily. And um, some stand out more vividly than others. And uh, the trauma work is all happening at the same time as the preparations to go out on the road. So um, I've been known to take on a lot at the same time. And this isn't any different. And it's okay. And I know I can do it. And it's breaking through years of built up fears and beliefs. Um, And it's a huge challenge along with like stuck energies in my body from the, from traumas that I experienced. And um, obviously I haven't gotten into the full out trauma work that's coming in January or so. And I am looking forward to it. Uh, In the meantime, though, little bits and pieces are, coming across my (laughs) radar, being offered for me to let go. And um, inner freedom and peace is very important to me. And the the sheer process of letting go all of this stuff is opening that for me. And that's what I'm noticing. Um, I moved into a space, uh, I think it was on Saturday, this past Saturday of complete grief and sadness as I was finishing up with organizing and gathering the photos and the paperwork together that I've been talking about to digitize. So it's not just, Hey, I'm digitizing photos and paperwork. No, (laughs) apparently it doesn't work that way, especially this time. This is, this is big because there's so many different, you know, big things happening. So, um, and I, and it's there to make more room because that's what I need. I need more room in my life. I don't need to carry this stuff around with me anymore, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. It doesn't need to be here. And as I was looking at the small pile of bags in front of me, I realized that my entire life was just sitting right before my eyes. And it saddened me that I was going to be walking through it all over again. Um, 
But the part that felt good was that I was doing it to make space in my life for this freedom. And I felt torn. So um, what's, what I'm looking through are pictures of my children, uh, my father and grandparents and the ancestors before them, my mother and grandparents and their ancestors and uh, other family members. And it's like, how in the world did I end up with all these pictures? I have no idea. Oh, I do. My grandmother had most of them. So I ended up with them. So now I get to figure out what, ta- what happens. Um, and all the things that I've been doing my healing work on is going to be like right in front of me in full color or black and white, depending on the time frame. And it's giving me an opportunity to dig really deep and go into a part of this journey that I really never thought I would be doing. And the release, again, emotionally, mentally, and physically is beyond an important part of my path. It's very important to me and the feelings and emotions that have been surfacing quickly and powerfully, you know, show that. And I'm grateful that I've done the work up until this point, um, or I probably wouldn't be able to do this. I mean, I could tell you five, uh, six years ago, I wouldn't be in a space to do this. So I'm really grateful for that. And uh, what I want to share too is that um, we all have this. Loss is a powerful thing. And it's been, for me, a huge crux of my life, grieving and healing from all the losses um, has brought me to where I am now. And I'm in a deeper um, place and more intense. It feels like, even though it's not painful, that's, that's the thing. It's like the expectation is that when we walk through this, that it's going to be painful and it is, but it's only for a few minutes. And then somehow it just, just kind of releases and let go. And that's, that's what I'm noticing about it. When I talk about letting go, it's like this, balloon letting out air. It's like the tension of the balloon. And then you just kind of let it let go and it and then it's gone. And then, I mean, it's not the memory may be there, but it's not as painful. We carry the memories, we carry the grief, we carry all that stuff, but it doesn't feel the same pain. It doesn't feel like the same pain as we go through the, the healing part, the healing journey. And I welcome it. It's helping me to heal more and more every day. And I appreciate it. And part of the part of being down here in South Florida is also to meet up with who I'm meant to connect with before I go on the road and also for closure if necessary. You know, I mean, um, I'm noticing that the people that I want to have closure with, I am not they're not coming across my my uh, radar. Uh, The people that I'm meant to connect with are the ones that are coming across my radar and they're not that many of them. And that's okay too. You know, I mean, maybe there is closure already and then I'm seeing, seeing that as well. And um, I'm just really, really blessed and grateful. I have so many dear friends in my life who are supporting me in different ways on this journey. And it's just an incredible feeling, something that I um, finally at this point in my life can receive all of this love because there was a time where I didn't think I deserved it. And that's not no more. I'm not doing that anymore because I know that, you know, when people offer, they're offering from their heart. And when we, me, when, when I say, no, 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 I don't want whatever, please. I don't want, you know what, that's actually not giving that person an opportunity to give. And it's not giving me an opportunity to receive and everybody love or most people love to do that. It's, it's about giving and receiving and it's most people it's about giving and receiving love and that's how it works, but you have to allow the other person. That's what I've come across to give, because if you don't let that happen, because you either feel like you're undeserving or um, you feel like, Oh, you don't need to do that. No, no, no. You know, whatever, for whatever reason, it, it isn't, it, it doesn't help the flow of the energy um, on this planet. So it actually blocks it. So being able to receive actually opens up that flow I'm noticing and helps it to continue. And that's exactly what's happening now. Something I didn't know before, you know, but I mean, I kind of knew it logically, but I didn't understand what it felt like. And now I do. And okay, so here we are moving into today, which is uh, November 29th. And I in the morning, well, actually throughout the day, I felt like 
all this love in my heart and a feeling of peace. And even through the things that occurred, um, Again, up until yesterday, there was no information yet about the car. I'm going uh, through the process I'm in first that I explained about, and it's, it's waiting for me. It's, it's there, you know, it's, it's, everything else needs to happen and it's time and it's way. And that's what I'm also learning about too. And um, the depth of this process is already happening and I haven't even left yet. Um, when I talk about the depth of the process, there is, again, a lot of loss and grief. And yesterday I was really feeling it. And throughout the day, I felt what I tenderly call off. I was feeling off. And when things just don't feel right, but I can't put my finger on what's going on or put a word to it, I just say, I feel off. Um, and I started to really feel that way in the afternoon. And then, uh, I was hit with an e email of a teacher of mine that had uh, died on November 18th from breast cancer. And she had been dealing with it for about a year. So from, uh, so from November's timeframe, I guess, of 2020 through November 18th of this year. And I'm assuming that's when it started. And that's when I started her course, which was really, you know, I mean, it, it just took me through this whole, um, I can't even explain it. It's like, okay, timing, look at all this stuff. It's just, it, it's just very interesting how things work. And um, <clears throat> the beginning of her uh, journey with breast cancer also apparently occurred during the time that my former partner's ex-wife was about to go through her end of life from the exact same thing. And so it was a really hard time last year for all of us, especially their daughter and him. And I was there to support. And I was also going through it because uh, of the, of the challenges, you know, that she was having and just being there to support her and being there to support him. And especially their daughter, who's very young, you know, who's young, she was seven when this happened. And um, it brought up it brought up some really, really deep feelings of loss for me when I heard about the teacher. And I wanted to cry, which I generally do to release, but I was just in this this, like I said, I was in this space. I really didn't understand where I was. And sometimes that happens for me. Sometimes I cry. Most of the time I, I, I go to crying because it helps to release, but not yesterday. So I couldn't do it. And so I decided to go out for a bit and I had initially tried to sit with it, but I've been sitting with all day working and I just needed to get out into this, into some, get some fresh air. And so uh, then later in the evening, once again, I found out another friend who was in the hospital was actually on his way out as well from cancer and found out uh, that he had died later last night. So I'm in prayer right now and sending love for his family. I'm in my own grief once again for myself, just hearing about all this stuff all at the same time. It's not easy. Um, I will absolutely tell you that it is very challenging uh, and it's definitely bringing up all kinds of things during this experiment on this ride of my life. This is big, it's like a roller coaster I'm finding, but, um, and what a ride this is turning out to be. And I'm grateful that I was able to be present to support, uh, another friend who's known this man who died last night for many years. And I just happened to be visiting and it isn't the first time something like this happened with, with my friend where I was already visiting with him and he received this kind of news. And I'm just grateful to be able to be available to support him. I don't know what it is, how it is that I'm here for here at those moments for him. I don't know. It doesn't matter. What I do know is I can, I'm here. I can be here for that support. And you know, this is a tough time in a year in general for most people. And when people we love die, it can be a completely overwhelming experience. And um, also, I just want to uh, put in the loss piece uh, real quick of, you know, I mean, I went through something, well, people call it parental alienation. If you don't know what it is, I'm just, you can look it up on um 
on Google, you can find it. Some some of the information with me of my experience. Um, I don't. I'm not getting into that piece of it. What I'm saying though is that there's a huge loss within that, and especially at this time of year where parents, loving parents who want to be with their kids, cannot because of this, and there's more loss. So there's extreme amount of heartbreak and pain and loss going on right now, especially at this time of year. And adding to that any deaths that even, you know, and, and there's, a, there's a difficult way of grieving somebody that I discovered who are, who's still alive. And that's what these parents are going through. Like I, like I did. And um, it's just, it's not easy. And so there's loss, lots of loss in there. And I just want to, you know, put out there, I, I send out um, love and, uh, prayers to you as well. So, cause I get it. Um, so who, okay. And also I'm, as I'm going through all this stuff that's happening, I realize, or I know that my mother's third anniversary of her death date is coming up in a few weeks as well. And that also happens to be the day after my former partner's, uh, ex-wife and, you know, his daughter's mom died, so it's like, it's all coming up. It's all hitting at the same time. And I know I'm okay. I continue to carry the grief with me, even while it's going on right in front of my face. I know that this is all part of life. I'm learning to deal with it differently. There's a lot of breathing going on. And the biggest thing for, for me <laughs> is just being with the pain and heartache of it. And the even bigger piece I guess the lesson to be held from this is I have no control. And that's one of my biggest lessons that I've talked about before is always trying to control things. And this is a lesson full out. So um, coming to today, uh, it's, I've had a feeling I've, I've, it's almost like I've got a day of feeling through everything that's happening and just following my guidance and having some regular work to do during the day Um, but I've also learned that it's okay to get lost in the work for a bit, but not to get totally lost in that. We don't even pay attention to, or like that. I don't even pay attention to my emotions and what's coming up for me because that's huge. That's very important. So I, I give myself space to feel what's happening and continue to grieve, continue to let go. And it's, um, I just, it's not an easy day. And it's just part of the ride of my life. And I just want to thank you for being here with me and hope you have a beautiful day. And that's it. Bye-bye.